Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, can you hear me now? Namrata Damodar Prasad. Hare Krishna, Sesha Prabhu, this is Damodar Prasad Das. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna, thanks for joining and uh, yeah, we are all waiting for you. Okay, I'm, I'm very sad. No problem. So just tell me when I should start. Yeah, Prabhu, uh, you can start, and uh, if there are any questions, uh, I will post it here. Uh, if you see a little chat window on your Zoom, um, like I'll, I'll type something here right now. Okay. See if you can see. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, so if there are any questions, I'll post it uh, at the end. Okay, and if you're at the end, okay. you, can, you can start, Prabhu. Thank you. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutalai Shrimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Dhenamare Namaste Sarasati Deve Gaurvani Pacharane Nirvishesha Sunivari Pashtachasana Vanchi Kalpa Thurubhyas Cha Kripa Sindhu Veva Cha Patita Nam Pavani Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Nimara Bhakti Chu Swami Maharaj Ki Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj Ki. Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj Ki. Hare Krishna, dear devotees, please forgive me for my ineptitude and not being able to log on at the appropriate time. I was trying, but as I say, I'm inept at that. Such an important subject matter. Every minute is important and so. I apologize very much. Actually, one of the reasons why I was a little late is I was watching the Zoom broadcast from Sridhar Mayapur of the Vapu of Bhakti Chutomi Maharaj arriving in Mayapur and being greeted with our team. Just now that program is proceeding with different talks from senior devotees and within a couple of hours, they'll place Bhakti Shri Swami Maharaj in Samadhi there in Sri Mayapur. It's such a great loss that we are experiencing for our Krishna consciousness movement and for the entire population of the world. One of the things that we lost with the disappearance of Bhakti Chu Swami is as described in the homage offered by the Sri Vaishnavas from South India, a great loss to Vedic Sanatan Dharm. Bhakti Chu Maharaj was such a special individual. He was a pure devotee walking this earth. And as the Sri Vaishnavas point out, 
That is a very rare occurrence when such a pure devotee of the Lord comes to this material world and gives us a chance to have his association. That was the experience we all had with Bhakti Chu Swami, and now it's a great loss. So just how it was lost, I don't want to get lost to be forgotten by, by the emotional void we feel by the loss, because there are practical, tangible things that we have lost with the passing of Bhakti Chu Swami Maharaj that we should recognize and try our best as we go forward to make up for that loss. Of course, how can we fill the shoes of such a great Vaishnava? But we can follow his instructions and his example and try to offset the loss because um, it's needed for the future of the Srila Prabhupada's ISKCON society. So what specifically have we lost? Two things I wanted to highlight this evening in terms of what we've lost. The first is we've lost a virtual walking encyclopedia of recent Gaudiya Vaishnava history and tradition. Dear Prabhu's understanding our tradition, understanding our development as part of the Vaishnava, uh, the Gaudiya Vaishnava growth over the last century or two is extremely important as we look towards the future. And Bhakti Chu Swami Maharaj was, as I said, very well versed academically, scripturally, socially, very well versed with the history. And without him, we lose something very significant. We lose a piece of our heritage if we cannot overcome this. Every year we go for the GBC meetings in Mayapur. And during the time, it's when Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur appeared in this world. So we always celebrate his appearance day. And every year, His Holiness Bhakti Chiru Swami would give the class, explaining in detail the history and situation of India, how it had become degraded, how Vaishnavas tradition had become degraded prior to the advent of Bhakti Vinod Thakur, how Bhakti Vinod Thakur represented the elite, educated um, Indian in British India. Um, indeed, this morning I was hearing how he was sought out by the um, was it Brahmo, Brahmoism or something? It was uh, intellectual Bengali gentlemen took up this path of Brahmoism. And they wanted Bhakti Vinod Thakur to be part of their group because he was such a clearly such an a, a, um, influential person. But when he came to their meeting, he spoke about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu very strongly, and therefore they gave up their interest in him. But such was the, uh, the atmosphere that surrounded uh, Gaudiya Vaishnavism a little more than a century ago. And Bhakti Vinod Thakur championed the growth and spread of Gaudiya Vaishnavism. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur followed, and he wanted to establish a governing body commission that could work collectively to spread Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission all over the world. And of course, you know, Srila Prabhupada accomplished that. 
But the point is that Bhakti True Swami knows the history in and out. He's conversant with it and conversant with individuals who are also part of that tradition. And out of that tradition comes our daily service to Guru and Krishna. And so to have someone to help link us culturally, spiritually, according to our Sampadai, to the past, someone who's very knowledgeable and conversant in that path is necessary for the firm growth of our society. This is my opinion. I'm not speaking doctrine other than my own realizations. But that was Bhakti Chu Swami. He represented that. He was our link to sannyasis, other Gaudiya Vaishnav sannyasis, and their mats. Um, a very, very important role. And it was shown in the last week by the condolence letter that was sent to ISKCON, to the GBC, from the Gaudiya mission also lamenting the loss of such a great Vaishnava. So Bhakti Chu Swami offered us something unique in that regard, that we have to try our best to educate ourselves and fill that void that his passing has left. The other practical matter also involved cultural dealings necessary for ISKCON in the future. We are an international society, and Srila Prabhupada wanted us to come together, the GBC and senior leaders come together every year in Maipur to discuss, to discuss what? Unity and diversity. We're a very diverse society all over the world, and Naturally, due to our different cultural upbringings, there may be tension, there may be difficulties in relationships, and it's just result from cultural misunderstandings. But here again was another strength of Bhakti Chu Swami Maharaj, based on his own background from an educated Bengali family and from studying and traveling extensively in the West and Europe prior to coming under Srila Prabhupada's shelter, Bhakti Shumars offered this society someone who could understand both Eastern and Western culture and thinking, and who could work and did work tirelessly to bridge the gap that could easily arise and result in the international society that Prabhupada established as fragmenting. This is something that I personally feel was a tremendous contribution Bhakti Chu Swami made to our uh, society. And that loss will be greatly felt. Someone who can, could understand East and West, let's say, unity and diversity, how to bridge the differences so that we can all go forward as a united society. Of course, he was able to do that out of his tremendous care and love for devotees. He taught Vaishnava etiquette courses. He introduced such courses to the ISKCON society. He exhibited his personal behavior and, and as a very cultured gentleman. Practically every homage that has been made to for Maharaj over the last week has mentioned his Vaishnava gentleman demeanor and how important that was in giving devotees hope and faith in the practice of Krishna consciousness. So these two these two aspects, cultural aspects, both of them when we think about them were very, very important contributions that Bhakti Chu Swami made. And he didn't have to endeavor to make them. That was just him as a person, him as a Vaishnava character, his Vaishnava character shining through. And so uh, we'll miss that. As I said, I was just observing. 
his arrival, being placed in Samadhi in Sridhar Mayapur. It seems so um, amazing being close in close proximity to where he departed this world. I'm situated in Alachua, Florida, just practically adjacent to Orlando where he left. We were very, we felt very close to the happenings that were going on leading up to his disappearance. And we were focused looking inward like that. But when we turned around and looked, we saw the whole world mourning and grieving and praying for Bhakti Chuswami. In any ordinary sense, the whole world doing something is a spectacle to be seen. But to turn around and from events that we felt very close to um, and see how all over the world, India, South Africa, Europe, um, Bangladesh, every place where he had disciples, a whole world of a whole world pouring out their hearts uh, for Bhakti Chuswami Maharaj. So at this point, um, He's leaving us in his vapu, but he, he'll remain with us by his example and his instructions. And we should study that character. I told, I've told his disciples when I spoke with them that due to modern technology, that people know how to work better than me, obviously, but due to modern technology, we have, we can see by the videos, uh, we can read by his books and hear his lectures. So we have no dearth of ability to follow, to understand his example and follow it. And so that's what we should do at this stage. So I'm sorry I took over a few minutes, but um, I'll stop here. I don't know if we have time for questions or we want to go directly on to my Swami Maharaj. I appreciate his patience with me. Um, but I'll, I'll end here and uh, you, you tell me what I should do from here. Thank you, Sesha Prabhu, for taking time and glorifying uh, Bhakti Charu Maharaj. As you said, the Samadhi celebrations are already happening in Mayapur at this time, and this is appropriate. We are talking about him here. Um, so we will go to Ramay Maharaj now, he's waiting, and we'll take the questions at the end uh, as people join and ask questions. Thank you once again, Sesha Prabhu. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna, everyone. Damodar Prasad, can you hear me okay? Can you see me okay? Yes, Maharaj. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Seisha. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I just caught the last five, ten minutes, but uh, it was wonderful uh, eulogy from Seisha Prabhu in uh, glorifying uh, His Holiness Bhakti Charamaj. Um, I don't know if you said, but uh, Bhakti Charamaj uh, was such a, a great person, a very extraordinary personality. You know, I was just reading uh, 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 something from Bhakti Vinod, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, where he said there are there are materialists, and then there are devotees, and then there are advanced devotees, and then, then there are very great devotees. And um, materialists, of course, they don't know really the mind of the devotee. Uh, and as far as devotees, they don't really know the mind of the very great devotees. Uh, Prabhupada once defined a very great devotee. He said that... Um, you know, the, the difference between ordinary devotee and great devotee is a great devotee, just by a few words, uh, can change someone's heart. It doesn't take, and we know in the personality of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, even without words, even just by looking, we know that Lord Chaitanya would, could give Krishna Prem to someone just by giving the glance uh, to that devotee. So Lord Chaitanya and, and great devotees of Prabhupada, just with a few words, he affected uh, so many people and many became his uh, uh, disciples all over the world. 
So I think that you know, Bhakti Charamaj is definitely in the in the category of a very great devotee. You know, many uh, god brothers and disciples alike. So many people around the world. There's such an outpouring, <clears throat> such an outpouring of um, of uh, of affection and gratitude uh, to uh, a, a given uh, from all quarters, from not only his disciples, from the god brothers and god sisters, from ordinary uh, people. Uh, Sisha mentioned from the Gordia Mat, we got uh, one letter of appreciation from the, uh, the 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 former chair of the Sri Sampradaya sent one uh, uh, amazing and and I just found I don't know if you have heard already but we 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 have got information now that uh, Maharaj is there in Mayapur and also that uh, the Chief Minister of Bengal uh, she waived all the normal procedures for you know bringing someone. Uh, you know, like you know, from the airport, there's so, so many red tape and, and procedures to go through. She sent personally state that she contacted them, said uh, uh, bypass all that for for Bhakti Charama. She said she said like that, bypass all that, and 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 and, and she gave uh, um, um, a police escort for Maj Maj's uh, uh, Vapu. His uh, body was in a special uh, 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 casket. And I had to go in a, a refrigerator because of this COVID. The government regulations uh, that they had to go in a refrigerated ambulance. And so she gave the refrigerated ambulance. She gave a, a backup ambulance just in case that one broke down. There was another one that she gave. Not only that, but she gave a police escort all the way uh, to uh, Mayapur with the sirens going, with the sirens going. Uh, and, and she said that at the airport, I'm sending some of my representative to bring a, a, a to uh, offer a big garland a big garland uh, to his holiness bhakti charama so this is uh, coming from the chief minister so from just the you know rank and file devotees so much outpouring and and, and respect and gratitude and affection love and from big big personalities that uh, you know we have the the chief minister, and, and so now we've got the information. He's uh, arrived there in Maipur and they're preparing. Uh, they couldn't advertise very much because you all know that the, the restrict government restrictions for the large gatherings and all this type of thing, there's a, uh, you know. So we had to do just those who were doing uh, part of the service of the of the samadhi and the ritual and everything like that are there now in Maipur right now, they're doing right now. Uh, so what a, what an a, a, a amazing personality. Of course, you you know, when, when we're in his presence, you know, everyone appreciated him. But now in separation, I think that is even more intense that, you know, we're, we're, we're missing him. We're pre and, and, and it's a sign of a, a very extraordinary personality that everyone thinks that they're the ones with the special relationship with, with Bhakti Charama, that he gave time to each individual and, and they have a little bit more special relationship with Bhakti Charama than someone else. But everyone felt the same way, and uh, and and uh, <clears throat> and that's 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 the effect of great personalities. You know, they they just their their hearts are so full of love uh, uh, and affection that uh, and they just make you feel like they got all the time in the world for you. It doesn't matter what's going on. Uh, uh, we were just talking uh, here. I'm at New Govardhan in Australia, and. Uh, and Banu Maharaj is here, where, where because we can't travel, Banu Maharaj is here, Mukunda Maharaj is here, I'm here, and some other devotees are here. So we're all talking and reminiscing in our association uh, with Bhakti Charamaj. Bhakti Charamaj is, you know, uh, um, he was sent, <clears throat> obviously, <clears throat> he was sent by Krishna, Lord Chaitanya, to assist Sula Prabhupada. Everyone is in agreement on that. He is a special, uh, you know, devotee who was sent. Uh, you know, and you know his the, his uh, 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 biography, and you know his uh, story, how he was born in the Bengal, and and then uh, when then he went traveling to Germany to study chemistry, but then he came back after some time. He went to the Himalayas looking for a spiritual master. And he wasn't satisfied. He met so many there in the Himalaya. And then he got a nectar of devotion. Somehow or other, he came across a nectar of devotion. And after reading the nectar of Vasila Prabhupada's translation of the nectar of devotion, that he became convinced that uh, now I've found my uh, uh, spiritual master. So he was finding out where Prabhupada, at that time Prabhupada was in America, I think. 
or overseas, and then he went and he joined the Mayapur Temple in, in, in 19, late 1976, and Prabhupada came in 1977 there, and they met. And almost straight away, Prabhupada said, you have to uh, <clears throat> translate all my books into Bengali, and, and he made him the his secretary for India Affairs. You know, So it's a wonderful story. Most of you have probably read uh, and uh, it's a wonderful story. He gave him the first initiation, the second initiation, right at Gopanim time, uh, and, and then sannyas. He gave him sannyas initiation just three months later. This is very, very uh, uh, extraordinary, very unusual that someone gets so many initiations all in, in, in one like that. So to me, that signifies that Prabhupada recognised this is his eternal uh, 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 associate. This is how he's been sent uh, by Lord Chaitanya to assist him, and indeed he did. Indeed he did. You know, he, he uh, for you know, he used to get up at midnight to translate the books, Prabhupada's books, and uh, and uh, into Bengali, and, and and so many things he did. So, it's a very amazing personality. And uh, and I was just uh, giving a class the other morning, <clears throat> and we were in the in the from, from the Srimad Bhagavatam, and about uh, uh, Maharaj Parikshit, Maharaj Parikshit coming across the personality of Kali. Who was beating the, the the legs of the the cow and the bull, and they're very symbolic. Although it also happened, uh, but it's also symbolic. The cow is a representative of Mother Earth, and the bull, of course, is a representative of Dhammaraj. So, beating the principles of religion. And when Maharaj Parikshit came there, he was very aghast. He was very uh, angry to see someone who was dressed. Kali was actually dressed as a king and an emperor. And beating, you know, this is very symbolic that in the future these things will go on. But, you know, Maharaj Pritchard didn't stand for it. And and Prabhupada was mentioning in the purport that Maharaj Pritchard, he comes from a very illustri- illustrious line, that, that, you know, from Arjuna, his grandfather, Yudhisthira, the Pandavas. And, uh, the line is very uh, glorious. And, and Maharaj Pritchard himself, he had the vision of the Lord even before he was born in the womb. Uh, he's very glorious, and he was always the the Krishna Bhakta, uh, and, and so he's very glorious. And, uh, uh, and the uh, proper went on there, glorious in, in so many ways, from a great lineage. Uh, he wasn't going to tolerate. He's the representative of his forefathers. He is the representative of the supreme personality of God. He wasn't going to tolerate someone first of all posing as a king when obviously he is not, and secondly, what is he doing? beating the, the, the legs of the cow and the bull and uh, um, uh, exploiting the Mother Earth and beating the, the, the principles of religion. So he wasn't going to tolerate. And he immediately took out his sword to punish the rascal Kali. So Prabhupada says a glory. Now, glorious is, can be understood in, in many ways, but Prabhupada in glorious is uh, two things. One is, one is possessed of many wonderful qualities, many, many wonderful qualities. Uh, such a person is glorious, talking about especially spiritual qualities, both material and spiritual. Uh, if, such a, if someone possesses these things, uh, all qualities, that, that person is glorious. And then uh, on the other side, if someone has achieved, well, he, he, he's performed a lot of uh, feats, uh, he's, a, he's accomplished so many things in the world, uh, and, and someone who's accomplished many things in the world uh, very great things in the world. Uh, such a person, such a person, also can be considered glorious. Uh, so, Parikshit Maharaj was glorious in both ways. He was glorious. He had achieved so many things in the world. He was successful in so many ways. Great accomplishments. He was glorious. Came in a glorious line with all the forefathers. They also achieved many uh, uh, wonderful things in their life. And they also possess great qualities. So Maharaj Parikshit had a combination of the both, great qualities and, and, and achieved uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of accomplishments with it. So I see also with the Bhakti Charamaj, you know, a very, very wonderful, so many wonderful qualities. She has been talking about that. All, you know, so many uh, devotees have, uh, have uh, eulogized him, written appreciations, glorifying him very, very beautifully. Uh, uh, and, and with uh, so much affection, and, and, the, and he's, the separation we have from him, felt by everyone, is, is, is very uh, deep. Is very very deep, and it's very lasting. Also, already, you know, and I'm, you know, and also another definition of, of glorious. Going back to that point was that the someone's 
uh, someone who will be uh, 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 greatly respected, uh, you know, in, throughout history. And that will continue for many, many, sometimes thousands of years. Such a person who is like that, that person is glorious. So I think Bhakti Charamaj, uh, he, he'll be the same. We, he'll never be forgotten. He'll always be remembered. The Prabhupada will be remembered. Of course, Lord Chaitanya is there, all the Acharyas are there. I said, Lord Bhakti Siddhanta, Bhakti Vinod, Bhakti, recent Acharyas, you know, Bhakti Vinod, Bhakti Siddhanta, Lord Prabhupada, and Bhakti Charamaj, very, very uh, uh, loyal to Siddhanta Prabhupada. Uh, whatever he did, he saw as a, as a service um, to Silla Prabhupada, you know. So glorious. Now, you know, true glory, and then, of course, you know, the, the, in the material world, there's, there's what's called the vainglorious or vainglorious. Vainglorious generally means the materialists. They, you know, they like to glorify themselves. And, uh, you know, that, that's called vainglorious. Either they do it, you know, like from their, you know, what they do, or, you know, their, their, their achievements, and they, they, you know, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, he describes this thing. Generally, when someone is very puffed up and, and, and vain, <clears throat> the generally person becomes very arrogant. Generally, those who are subordinate to them, they mistreat and abuse them. Those who are, are on an equal level or competitors, uh, they just like boast, boast and, 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 and try to, what they call in the West, one-up them. You know, all right, you did that. But, oh, yes, but I did this, so I'm better than you. And then, and then, uh, and then, uh, you know, those who are actually uh, obviously in a superior position, they're very envious of them, and they want to pull them down. So that's on the material side. So we we didn't see any of those qualities in Bhakti Charama. He is glorious in a true way, very, very, very humble. And whatever he put his mind mind to doing, I saw he could just do it. He could just do it. I think Seisha, you, you talked about uh, Bhakti Charama, the courage. You know, he had the affectionate, warm, soft heart, uh, but he had he had the heart of a lion. Also, he was very courageous. He would go in in in, in, in situations that were um, problematic in our movement. You know, throughout throughout the decades, uh, he 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 would you know when we were looking around the GBC, would be discussing who can go there to help the situation. Bhakti Charmaj was one of the first to volunteer. You know, he went to France. When, when France was in, you know, new, the government wanted so many back taxes there, you know, the bank, uh, that they owed money on, on a loan to the bank. Harry Vilas would be able to describe these things. But, uh, you know, but uh, uh, he went there and he went around the UK and he ra personally went around and fundraised and I think he raised about £800,000 uh, to, to, uh, to help New Maipur to salvage Maipur from, you know, the taxes and, and the loan from the bank, and we were able to, you know, uh, re retain possession of the of New Maipur. So he did like he helped in South Africa, uh, in Maipur, and and uh, you know, uh, New York, uh, wherever there was. I mean, he would go there, sacrifice. Uh, others would want, oh no, let the, can someone else do that or something like that. But uh, he was like. If, if, if it was just humanly possible, uh, he would be a uh, volunteer to do it. So, so courageous and so sacrificing. Uh, in, you know, in, in the West, we have a saying, you know, we have a saying, someone who's very generous and, and, you know, they would, you know, we have a saying, they they would give you the shirt off their back, the shirt off their own back. Uh, so Bhakti Charamaj was like that. And actually, actually I remember one time that uh, I arrived into Calcutta Airport to go to Maipur for the GBC meetings and somehow or other the airline had misplaced my luggage. So I was waiting there for the luggage and no luggage came and then I asked someone, oh, no, it's uh, it got misplaced on another flight. Uh, maybe tomorrow or the next day it will come. So I had to go in the self-same clothes out to the Maipur and I didn't have, you know, have a toothbrush. Uh, and so Bhakti, somehow or other Bhakti Charamaj heard about it. I don't know how we heard about it. I arrived there, I was in my room, and all of a sudden a knock on the door and there's Bhakti Charamaj. He's, he's there and he's got a whole lot of cloth. <laughs> I think these would fit you, Marge. I heard that you, uh, the, luggage, the luggage was lost. I think these would, would fit you, you know, and he had the, the curder and then no, try them on, try them on. Oh, all right, I'll try them on later. No, try them on now. But if it's too small, uh, you know, we, we can get a bigger one or I'll get some, something made. <laughs> You know, so I tried, oh, this is all right, this is good, and then the toothbrush, everything like that. So he was he was like that. 
is a certain you know he would he would just do anything for you and a very warm uh, a true Vaishnava gentleman uh, you couldn't find a, a more Vaishnava gentleman than, than uh, Bhakti Charma so 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 very very wonderful uh, and uh, so who knows his situation coming to America I was uh, I heard that Bhakti Charma had gone to America I was wondering why well, you know because the situation there with the COVID and everything like that why did he go then someone said Amaj actually made a video uh, he gave a, a lecture in Ujjain and uh, gave the explanation why he you know he wanted to go for the preaching and everything like that even sacrificing his own welfare you know uh, physical welfare to go to America to uh, spread Krishna consciousness that's the sort of person he was uh, uh, and so who, who can understand and in the last uh, um, when he contracted um, uh, the COVID he was put in the hospital yeah, very very uh, um, gut-wrenching uh, you know situation for, for all of us who heard about that and uh, but I'll just to read one uh, uh, translation from one verse from Srimad Bhagavatam oh king no one can know the plan of the Lord. Even though great philosophers inquire exhaustively, they are bewildered. The best policy is simply to abide by the orders of the Lord without argument. When the Supreme Personality of God had arranges something, one should not be disturbed by it, even if it appears to be a reverse according to one's calculations. Uh, so these are very nice verses from the Srimad Bhagavatam that illustrate how, how we, we, we cannot know the actual very esoteric Maharaj's leaving this world in the way he did, something between Krishna and him. Uh, his mission uh, uh, is, is somewhere else now uh, with Prabhupada, uh, with Lord Chaitanya, with Radha and Krishna. Uh, and so uh, um, the Vapu is, is there, we'll remember him. He's going to have the full Samadhi there in Maipur. And, uh, but his Bani, and as Asisha said, we've got so many wonderful uh, recordings of Maharaj, not only audio recordings, but uh, uh, video recordings. And I, I, you know, I've been getting a, a, a whole lot of them, just to, the disciples have been sending me and other devotees have been sending and probably most of you have seen also where Maharaj is chanting so nicely and giving talks. And so just by seeing these things, just like we as disciples of uh, Prabhupada, we, we, you know, we can watch the videos of Prabhupada and hear his audio tapes. Uh, so uh, uh, when Srila Prabhupada left us, Srila Prabhupada was, fell ill a number of times, and you know, he was elderly, and he fell ill, I think, the first time, even on the way to uh, America, he had the heart attacks. And then I think again in 1967, he had a recurrent, I think, heart attack again, recurrence or some stroke, I don't know exactly. And, and then I think, uh, and then each time the devotees would pray, and then of course I remember I think it was around 73, 74, Prabhupada was ill again, and uh, the disciples were, uh, were, were praying that, my dear Lord Krishna, if you so desire, our spiritual master has uh, so much more work, you know, I can't remember exactly, but uh, uh, we, we were praying. And then again, he was fairly ill again in 76, 77, and the devotees were praying but uh, I personally thought that he would recover just like the other times but it came to pass that um, that he did uh, leave his uh, mortal frame in this world and, and went and went back home back to God uh, so uh, at the time I just before Prabhupada uh, left us uh, he sent word through his secretaries that all his disciples could come to Brindava I don't know, but they should probably remember that. The word went out. All, all his disciples, uh, if they want, uh, normally Prabhupada would say, no, well, you know, you, you've got so much service to do. You know, you can come into Gopanima time and like that. But, uh, you know, don't come unnecessarily. You know, there's so much preaching work to be done. But at this point, uh, uh, he said, uh, uh, you know, every, anyone can come. All, all his disciples can come. So at that time I was, uh, you know, uh, in London, and I uh, was doing some preaching in London. And uh, I said, well, when I get back, I had to return to Sydney. When I get back, then uh, when I get back, then I'll, then I'll fly to Brindavan. But then I, when I arrived in Sydney, I heard that Prabhupada had actually left this world. So I was very remorseful that I didn't make the decision to go earlier and actually be there 
with Silla Prabhupada. Actually, he passed away while I was flying on the plane. And uh, so then, uh, of course, we had the uh, ceremonies and everything like that, remembering Prabhupada, disciples were crying. So it's very understandable. It's a mixed feeling in these, these sort of occasions. Uh, we're very sad, you know, that uh, now uh, we no longer have the direct association, you know, physical association of His Holiness Bhakti Charamari. But certainly through his Vani and through, his, you know, uh, associating and thinking and uh, keeping him within our hearts, we will always... Uh, 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 have his association, and and he and, and and he gave so much to this movement. He enriched this movement like anything. I have to say, he enriched. You know, you felt. And I, I told him on a few occasions. I said, I said, Bhakti Charan, I, you know, when I'm with you, I, uh, you know, I, I, I don't want to put you in an awkward situation, but I do feel, you know, close close to Prabhupada being with you. You definitely exude the, the mood of Prabhupada in the way you deal with, with with me and with others I see you deal with. And I feel very close to Prabhupada. And he, and he used to talk about Prabhupada all the time. He used to talk about Prabhupada all the time. So I, I said that to him. And, he, of course, he was very humble. He said, oh, no, uh, who am I? I'm just, you know, a humble servant. I'm trying to be the servant of my Guru Maharaj, he would say. You know, he would always be very humble. So, uh, you know, you know, there are no, not enough words really to describe the, the greatness of um, His Holiness Bhakti Charamaj and uh, I'm sure we will continue to glorify him for many, 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 many years to come. So, Hare Krishna, thank you very much for allowing me to uh, express my uh, gratitude, respect and love and affection for uh, His Holiness Bhakti Charamaj. So I'll, I'll stop there because I think that um, uh, there is an arrangement for some of you to ask some questions or give some comments. Hare Krishna, I'll hand it over to Dhammada Prashad. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Ramay Maharaj. Thank you for your wonderful uh, remembrance about um, Bhakti Charu Maharaj. Um, you, Sesha Prabhu and Bhakti Charu Maharaj are the three major pillars for the last couple of years, guiding us through the difficult times. So we have seen personally, each of us here at Seattle, uh, Bhakti Charu Maharaj in action, in all the humors which you mentioned, right from the compassion to the courageousness and uh, uh, humility, and also the preaching and engaging everyone, uh, right from the child to the old, uh, is so humble and accessible. Uh, so definitely the congregation here is missing out uh, association, but they're taking solace in hearing these words. Uh, it, I will start with um, Sesha Prabhu, like uh, if you could share uh, anything which can uplift uh, based on your personal example with our association with Bhakti Charu Maharaj, uh, maybe one, uh, some incident uh, that can help us and that can be great. Hare, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, thank you. Well, there was, there was one incident that um, happened when Bhakti Chu Swami was visiting here in Alachua. He was staying at my house um, and he had to go out to get a flu shot because he was going to visit His Holiness Jabbataka Swami and Jabbataka Maharaj, his health was very delicate. And they didn't want anybody to come in there that might have the flu that could be passed on to him. So in order to go, Bhakti Chu Swami had to get a flu shot. And so I took him to just a regular pharmacy here in, in Gainesville, where I live. It was just a middle of the summer shopping center, all kinds of um, conditioned souls going in and out of stores. So I took him in, and one of our devotees, pharmacists, worked there. So he gave him the shot. And when we came out, I think Bhakti Chu Swami gave me an example of how, just as Ramaya Swami was saying, he was, could be dear to everyone. Because it was quite amazing. We came out, and there was a young boy not a devotee boy, just a young boy, 10, 12 years old. And um, he, he was a boy scout. In India, they have barred scouts. But they have the boy scouts here. So he was a boy scout. And he was selling popcorn 
to raise money for their Boy Scout activities. And so Marge could have easily brushed by the boy and not noticed him and gone about his way. He was a world acharya, basically. But he stopped, he stopped and engaged that 10, 12 year old boy in a conversation. He asked him, what are you doing here? What cause are you trying to collect money for? Are people giving you money and donations? He was talking with this boy in such a friendly way. And, and the boy was, whether he knew it or not, having the experience of a lifetime interacting with a pure devotee of the Lord. And so at the end of the conversation, Marge asked the boy, well, how much is the popcorn? And then he bought some popcorn from the boy and then told him goodbye as we walked on. And it reminded me of the instance where Srila Bhakti Sananta Saraswati Thakur was walking to the temple one day with his disciples and you know how the beggars sit on the path toward the, to the entrance and none of Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj's Gurhasta disciples was giving money to the beggars. And so he stopped and he chastised all of them. Why aren't you giving to these beggars? You know? If you don't give, your heart will become hard. That's all, your heart will become hard. And so he chastised them for something like ordinary charity to poor beggars on the path. And the same way, there was a boy, a young boy that that was just trying to do what he thought was right. And uh, he was recognized by Bhakti Chu Swami uh, and engaged by him in talking. He didn't have to tell him Hare Krishna, but he gave him a Hare Krishna experience of a Vaishnava gentleman that Bhakti Chu Swami is for everybody, not just for his God brothers and the devotees, but everybody's experience with him is like that. So that's one instance that um, I'll leave you to meditate on. Thank you, Sesha Prabhu, for sharing an experience. Uh, say, Maharaj, uh, Ramay Maharaj, uh, do you uh, like to give any experience that uh, is relevant for the situation which we are in? We can also meditate. Uh, and since also one more question is, as a uh, chairman of GBC right now, so uh, are there any future plans of honoring Bhakti Charu Maharaj in a certain way? Uh, so if you could share those details, it would be wonderful. Um, well, yes, and in regard to uh, um, uh, future plans, you know, um, uh, Rod Guilas and Amberish, uh, who, who, uh, you know, Amberish, who's uh, uh, helping to build the TOVP there, Amberish has actually, um, he's paying for a big, uh, not a big, you know, a, a, a nice samadhi. He's, a, he, you know, a nice samadhi there in Mayapur. At, at the moment, uh, they, they've just uh, dug the pit and, and the casket will go in the pit. But then after the ceremony is complete, uh, that Amberish will, will fund building a nice monument in, 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 in Mayapur, samadhi monument. And so uh, once that's complete and once the restrictions are, uh, are relaxed by the Indian government, uh, they plan Amberish and uh, they put to the executive committee, Amberish and Raj Bilas put to that, uh, uh, perhaps if the, the, uh, the restrictions are, are relaxed by next AGM, the, the GBC AGM in February, for next February to 21, uh, then we can uh, uh, set aside uh, a day you know, everyone comes when the samadhi will be completed. All the GBCs will come, and all everyone can come and, and glorify. Have a an afternoon, a morning and afternoon session, glorifying Bhakti Charma. So there, there are plans to continue, and this is this is uh, 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 because also next year they they want to in the, in the TOVP they want to put uh, Sri Prabhupad uh, and you know the murti of uh, of Sri Prabhupad and the Yasasan Sri Prabhupad. They want to. With Sula Prabhupada, so combining Sula Prabhupada one day and then the, the next day will be uh, Bhakti Charamaj. So there are future plans. Uh, at the moment, unfortunately, we can't have very grand affair because the 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 ISKCON, the leaders at the Maipo had to uh, um, give their promise to the government that they would not allow big, large numbers because uh, previously there was one big Muslim leader 
uh, who passed away, and then somebody came to uh, uh, to the funeral, and uh, and like ten thousand people, and so many cases of COVID came from that. So uh, only when the Maipo uh, uh, management uh, gave their guarantee that wouldn't be like so. But in the future, there's plan, of course, to do that. So we told them, yes, as the time grows nearer, you know, we can. Uh, we can uh, make uh, we can see what's going on with the situation with the uh, COVID and uh, government restrictions, and then we can make an arrangement to glorify Bhakti Charamaj there in Maipo. But uh, certainly, uh, you know, Maharaj uh, can be glorified everywhere and at any time, and we encourage that. Um, you know, um, there are many examples, I'm sure, every devotee, because he, he just touched everyone. And, uh, you know, it's very, very rare that someone can have uh, touch everyone like the way he's touched everyone, uh, you know. But uh, you know, I think that one thing I really picked up from Bhakti Chama, he liked association of devotees. You know, he, he loved chanting, and of course, speaking. He was such an excellent speaker, so knowledgeable, and uh, and and association of devotees, especially, you know, to sitting and having prashada. And you all know there in in, in at that Seattle that uh, that he loved to invite devotees for prashadam and have association. Sometimes he would cook himself. Quite often he would cook. I remember many years ago in Auckland, in New Zealand, he just announced that, oh, this, uh, for, I'm cooking lunch for all the devotees today. <laughs> so he just announced, I'm cooking lunch. And so he was cooking. And then uh, later on, uh, in the halfway through the morning, he was out in the fields, uh, you know, just by the temple. With, it, it had a big pot. <laughs> yeah, a big pot and he was pulling out some I, I thought it looked like weeds <laughs> like long things growing and uh, and um, and he was pulling that putting in the pot I'm thinking what's my eyes doing over here putting in, it's good going to cook weeds for us <laughs> but then later on he told us that uh, no these are special type of spinach that grows kind of wild and he just noticed it when he was uh, driving in and, and he thought to go out and get it fresh so he very much loved cooking, and he very much loved cooking for the devotees. So that would, that he would, it would warm his heart, you know, and I could see. And, he, you know, he would uh, come in and, and personally go around. Is everything all right? When we all went to Ujjain, you know, uh, Seshu would remember a couple of years ago, we had a GBC meeting in Ujjain, which is his headquarters in India. Uh, he would go around, he would greet us all and personally come to our rooms. Is everything all right? Personally come. Is everything all right? Are you being looked after? And he would talk to his disciples, make sure that whatever they need, whatever they want, uh, you supply it. So he's, he, that's one thing I really learned from him. You know, you know, you know I, I thought I like, you know, had a little bit of caring to, for devotees. But when I, when I was in his presence, I, I realised, you know, I'm, I'm, I got a, my heart's hard compared to Bhakti Charm. Look, look how he treats everyone. He just treats everyone with such respect and humility and affection and, and, and association. So I think that uh, you're associating with each other nicely, taking prashad together, doing nice kirtan, these are the things that uh, he very much loved and he travelled all over the world doing these things. Of course, he was such an excellent speaker, as I already said as well. He was such an excellent speaker. I mean, things he, he was so knowledgeable about. He would quote from all sorts of shastras, uh, uh, Mahatmya, he'd be able to quote, quote the Bengali. <laughs> and so he was so knowledgeable. And, uh, and if, if you wanted to ask some philosophical question, uh, you quite often go to Bhakti Charamash to, to get the answer. So I think that if we think of him in that way and, and do ourselves like that, associate with each other very nicely, very humbly, uh, take prashad together. Uh, do kirtan together. He he very much. I remember in Maipur, in his room one time, he had a special kirtan in the afternoons. Every day. he invited everyone to come for the kirtan. So very very wonderful devotee. And just round the clock, just always engaged in Krishna service. Just round the clock. There was never a moment he was always engaged in, in Krishna service. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maran, and thank you, Sesha Prabhu, for sharing the. Your personal association with Bhakti Maharaj and talking about him. Uh, I see Harulas Maharaj is on the call. Uh, Maharaj, Harulas Maharaj, do you have anything to share? We have five more minutes. Uh, Hare Krishna. 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 Hare Krishna
uh, I don't have much to add other than uh, Bhakti Chiru Maharaj was a very dear friend of mine, as he was to many, many, um, I mean, legions of devotees. And he was always a perfect gentleman, very compassionate, and very endearing. And he was very conscious of Prabhupada. You could tell that he was meditating all the time on Srila Prabhupada and how to please him. And this is the quality of a genuine disciple, someone who has given up all desire for sense gratification and transferred all his desires to pleasing his spiritual master and Srila Prabhupada and, and Krishna. <clears throat> So it was such a pleasure associating with him. He made you feel confident about the future. He was basically a person who was very intolerable. In other words, he, he did not tolerate seeing other people suffering. So he would go out of his way to do everything to help those devotees who were in difficulty, as he did for me and many, many other people. This is one of his greatest let's say, qualities, that uh, he would not tolerate the suffering of others. He would do something practical, and uh, as much as his abilities uh, would permit, he uh, was like that, and, you know, as Shesha Prabhu has previously spoken, and, and, and also Guru Garanga, he was ferocious uh, to uh, help the devotees who were suffering in, in the New York uh, area due to being expelled from the temple and he did he promised to help them even though it seemed very improbable at the time but he promised with all the uh, all the assets available to the GBC to correct the situation and obviously Krishna helped him and, and sent the right people to help him and he was able to do it he was able to keep that promise so that's that is the symptom of a person who is meditating 24 hours a day on pleasing Prabhupada and also pleasing the devotees and making them hopeful, confident, and enthusiastic to be Krishna conscious and associate with uh, persons like Bhakti Chiru Maharaj to bolster and confirm their conviction to stay in Krishna consciousness in this lifetime and always be engaged in positive, favorable service to Prabhupada and Krishna. So these are some of the things I've learned from him. And it's one thing to know something theoretically. It's another thing to see it in practice, just like Jason Prabhu and Ramai Sori are both uh, attested to that. Uh, Maharaj was a walking testament of uh, a, a genuine devotee and above all, a faithful disciple of Srila Prabhupada who dedicated his whole life and energy to doing whatever Prabhupada wanted him to do. And, and if you read his book, at one episode when he asked for initiation from Prabhupada, and Prabhupada said, yes, I will. And then at that point he says, Prabhupada, you can do with me anything you want. I will do anything for you to serve you. So that is like Arjuna who says, Karishya Vachanam Tava, whatever you say, Krishna, that's what I'm going to do. And that was Bhakti Chu Maharaj also. So thank you very much. It's a great honor to be able to speak about him and also hear about him from uh, Shesha Prabhu and Ramai Swami. And uh, I look forward to many, many more sessions of uh, remembering Bhakti Chu Maharaj and his relationship with Srila Prabhupada and his a merciful and compassionate relationship with many, many devotees. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you for joining. And we are at the top of the hour. Um, thank you. And again, we'll meet again. Hare Krishna. His Holiness Bhakti Charu Maharaj Ki. Uh, uh, God. God. Hare Krishna. We are, we are ending the call now. Hare Krishna. Mm-hmm.